Well, good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. Good to be back again. It's hard to believe it's two months since we've started going this way, worshiping online and uh, coming together in this virtual world. And we're slowly starting to see things talk of opening up society again, gradually. Um, whether it's the right decision, whether it's too soon, it's hard to say at this point. But we're going to move forward. Um, I know I have been out fairly regularly in the city, driving around, and I know the last two weeks I've started to see more and more people out in the city. The surprising thing is very few are taking precautions. Very few people are wearing masks as they go out. This pandemic is far from beaten. So if you do have to go out, please wear protection, get a mask, any kind of mask, will give you some kind of protection against transmission of this disease. And studies have shown countries there, which wearing masks is mandatory, transmission of the disease drops right off. So if you do have to go out, please get a mask of some kind. Some masks are better than others, but anything is better than nothing. So take precautions if you do have to go out and uh, take care the social distancing, a big factor. Uh, Take that very seriously because I'm seeing people who are not taking it seriously out there. And we're going to see a second wave of this disease, which could easily dwarf this first wave. Uh, let us hold in our prayers the people who have succumbed to this disease there. Those that uh, have passed in our country. The latest numbers, we had something like 75,000 people infected in this country. And we've lost 5,600. So let's keep in our prayers the families of these people who have passed, who didn't get through this. And also, especially, it's holding our prayers, our brothers and sisters to the south of us, who are taking this far worse and dealing with it far worse. Latest numbers show almost one and a half million people infected and 89,000 fatalities. Let us hold all those people in our prayers as they move forward and as they come to grips with this as they fight this disease. Prayers for our health care givers as they continue to fight and try to deal with things as best they can. Some hospitals there are overwhelmed in the South. So let's hold all of them in our prayers as we move forward. Um, <clears throat> again, if anybody would like to make donations to help support our church during this shutdown, uh, you can send your donations uh, by mail to our post box, Box 262, C4th, Ontario. Please specify as to which church this is going to, Northside United or Cabin United. Um, and we'll see that it gets to the uh, proper treasurer. Uh, at least maintain our church, because we still have our expenses there as we go through this time of shutdown. And I pray that sometime in the near future, we will be able to come together as a worshiping committee again, as a worshiping group. But at the same time, we won't do that until it is safe to do it. So let us all move forward, holding our prayers, each other, uphold each other. If somebody needs help, let us know here at the church and we'll get the help to you uh, in a safe way. Um, that's all I have. Let us begin with our service, our acknowledgement of the territories. In keeping with recent United Church practices and fulfilling the calls to action, in the Truth and Reconciliation Report, we in the United Church of Canada recognize the Aboriginal peoples of this land, the Inuit and the Métis, as the original stewards of this land. We are all people of these treaties, signed in good faith. Let us live up to the spirit of these treaties in all our undertakings, respecting the land and learning from these peoples. Because of the living Lord Jesus Christ, we can confidently say we are never alone. For the Counselor, the Spirit of Truth, is with us always. Bidden or unbidden, God is always present. Just as the sea is to the fish, the air is to the bird, so is God to all who live by faith, hope, and love. Never remove from us the love that endures forever. Bidden or unbidden, God is ever present. Let us worship this wonderful God. Let us pray. 
Loving God, by your spirit, lay streamers of holy joy through the time of this worship, that we may be able to offer you something far brighter than duty and much livelier than religious solemnity. Let us worship you with love and love you with our worship through Jesus Christ, our ever living God and inspiration. Amen. My friends, we come to God with prayers of confession, not to rake up added guilt and self-hatred, but to become repentant and re-embrace the new life which God offers us through Jesus Christ. Let us pray. When our faith becomes shaky and we fall into the deep trough of doubts and anxieties, Lord have mercy. When our hopes and joy lapse and we get bogged down in the swamp of despondency, Christ have mercy. When our hearts grow cold towards the rights and needs of others, and apathy set, settles in like a wintry fog, Lord have mercy. When our minds become confused by the babble of the world's many religious voices, and we lapse into spiritual cynicism, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy and heal us all. God most holy and most merciful, grant each of us a sincere repentance, a heart open to forgiveness, and a will to make amends, and a soul fixed on loving. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. It is true. You had better believe it. Where sin flourishes, the redeeming grace of God flourishes even more. We are forgiven people, a reclaimed people. Thanks be to God. O oh Lord, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Give us grace to receive your truth in faith and love and strength to follow on the path that you set before us. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes from the first letter of Peter. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. For it is better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for the sins, the righteousness and the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. And after being made alive, he went on and made proclamation to the imprisoned spirits, to those who were disobedient long ago, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, while the ark was being built. In it, only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from your body, but a pledge of a clear consciousness towards God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand, with angels and authorities and powers in submission to him. And our gospel reading today comes from the gospel according to John. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. For he lives in you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. 
Before long, the world will not see me anymore. But because I live, you also will live. And on that day, you will realize that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. And the one who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I too will love them and show myself to them. Hear what these ancient words are saying to us today. Thanks be to God. <sighs> I don't know about you, but I'm a person who hates to say goodbye. It gives me a great feeling of sadness when I have to say those words. There's something final about those words. I'll do everything I can to dance around actually saying those words. I know when I left Wild Rose United two years ago, I closed my final message with that final song from the Carol Burnett Show. You know, I'm so glad we had this time together. I think we all remember that one. But still, in the end, it was goodbye, and it was a great sadness. Whether I wanted to say those words or not, they were still there. But here's a thought I, I came across there that might give us some comfort when we have to use those words goodbye. Did you know that the word goodbye is actually a shortened form of God be with you? In fact, in many languages, that expresses the same thing. In Spanish, adios means to God, meaning that our lives are in God's keeping. And that saying in Spanish, vea con Dios, means go with God. And we always close our services with a benediction that reminds us that as we part from each other, as we go our own ways into the world, God is also there with us. We do not leave worship alone. Well, our gospel reading today is actually a goodbye story. Jesus and his friends, they just shared a meal up in the upper room. He would washed his, their feet. He shared a meal. The Last Supper was instituted. And Jesus' time of betrayal, trial, and death was imminent. Jesus knows what's coming. And instead of running and hiding, he tries to bring comfort to his friends and to say goodbye. The atmosphere had to have been tense. The disciples must have known something ominous was going to happen. And they were at a loss for words. But Jesus, in his characteristic way and his compassion, puts his own feelings aside and tries to comfort his friends. I'm leaving, Jesus says, but you will not be alone because God will send another, the advocate, the Holy Spirit, to teach you all the things and remind you of all the things that I have taught you. I'm leaving you with something to remember me by, a farewell gift, Jesus says, precious beyond all measure. So don't be troubled, don't be afraid. I'm leaving you my peace. Jesus was leaving them peace as this final gift. And Jesus goes on to say, the world does not know or understand this kind of peace that I'm leaving with you. Now, when we think about peace, we usually think about the absence of war between nations, the ending of hostilities between people. And even though the Cold War may continue, some politicians may speak of a great time of peace that we've been through. But I think we all know better I don't think we've ever experienced a period of time when there has not been some kind of war waged at some point. Animosities between people. Even in today's society, we see hatred spewn out. People speaking hatred against people of different races, creeds, color of skin, different belief systems. There is no peace as we know it by their definition. A couple of boys get into a fight in school the teacher runs out and says, okay, you two stop it now. I want you to quit fighting and shake and make up. And though those two boys, they may shake hands and they may walk away looking peaceful. But beneath that tranquil exterior, those feelings that started that fight in the first place may still be raging out of controls. They may be experiencing a whole range of emotions. Hate, dislike, fear, revenge, anger. The boys may pardon peace, but they certainly don't experience it. But the peace that Jesus is talking about is not the ending of conflict between peoples. The peace that Jesus is talking about is an inner peace 
that has its roots deep in our hearts. It gives us an inner strength and tranquility, regardless of the turmoil that may exist around us. That is the peace that Jesus is talking about. That is the peace that God offers us. There's an old story there I came across there, which illustrates this quite nicely. A little boy there is on a ship. The ship is in the middle of a big storm. And he's sitting there quite calmly there, looking out the window. The waves are buffeting the ship. And a passenger asks the boy, aren't you worried? Doesn't the storm frighten you? And the boy replies, no. If I sit here, I can look out that window and I can see the captain at the helm. That captain is my father and he has brought this ship through many storms. And as long as my father is at the helm, he will get us safely through this storm. I'm not afraid. All too often, we have trouble understanding what Jesus meant by peace. And sadly, all too often, we tie this peace to a requirement of our faith. In other words, instead of seeing peace as a gift, we see it as a command. If you are a Christian, you're going to have peace. <coughs> Jesus is offering peace. But he does not say, I am here, the Holy Spirit's here, God's at here, you're going to be at peace now. That peace that Jesus offers cannot simply be had because we want it. The peace of God is a gift that can only be received as a byproduct of our faith. That's why so many people miss this peace that they talk about. Most of the world sees peace as an end in itself, a release from tension, the avoidance of struggle, an escape from pain and contentment. So we're bombarded with all kinds of promises for peace in the forms of aspirin, laxative, drugs, legal and illegal, all kinds of diversions. We've been pampered with the slightest pain that we can end our boredom, end our pain just by popping a pill, take a drink, buy this rope, buy that or to overcome our discomfort. So we search out the world for these glamorous promises for ease, some respite from whatever it is that's affecting us. The peace of contentment. Now what's bad with that, you might ask? What's wrong with wanting to feel good? Life is hard after all. Why not try to avoid the struggle? Why should we not try to combat the boredom? Why not alleviate the pain? There was a seminary prof who once said, you people are spoiled. You think that suffering is bad. And that's not always true. Suffering is never comfortable, yes. And in this world, it is unavoidable. And sometimes, if we face it right, official. That old theologian, Nietzsche, was playing with the truth when he said, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Suffering, yes, does become destructive when it drives the person into self-isolating themselves from God and the people they love. But suffering can also be a positive if faith and love create the power to overcome it. The heroes and heroines in the world are not the ones that took it easy, who had it good, but they are the ones that struggled and overcame those odds, those struggles. Their faith got them through and made them stronger people. And they became the heroes that we look up to. The peace that Jesus gave to his disciples involved very little contentment. He knew what was coming up for them. They, he knew they would be enduring persecution, misunderstanding, and hardships of every kind. And Christians today still face hardships and persecutions. We still are looked down upon. We are still frowned upon. There are hardships that exist even in today's society. Maybe that's why Jesus said, Come unto me, all who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Notice he didn't say, Come unto me, all who are contented. All of you who have been able to avoid the tensions and struggles of life. Jesus says, Come unto me who are weary, and I will give you that rest. Now the Greek word rest is translated to being refreshed and revitalized, rather than finding relaxation. That we may come to him, and he will give us the strength to bear those burdens. He promises 
regeneration for those who are at the end of the rope, and peace for those that struggle. A good illustration comes from the Apostle Paul. Paul was a man with a host of ailments, but he talks about this thorn in his side, thorn in his flesh, and he was constantly beleaguered by those who were out to destroy him. One time he cried in Romans 7, 24, O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Or later he wrote in Philippians 4, 12, I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I have learned the secret of facing hunger and want. And again, in 2 Timothy 4, 7 to 8, he writes, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved to me a crown of, crown of righteousness. Paul experienced serenity of the soul, not because he took the easy way out, because he met it head on. And God helps us to overcome all that. He helped Paul and God can help us now. That spirit is there for us to get through this. Paul says that the peace he experienced was beyond human understanding because it was not simply the absence of hostility and distress in the world. It was not produced within himself, but it was the amazing gift given by Christ through faith. This promise that Christ gave to his friends 2,000 years ago is still valid today. Jesus reaches out to us through time and space and offers us his peace, his peace still today. Jesus says to us all, my peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you. But as we hear those words of invitation, I'm reminded that this peace is not always the way of comfort and contentment. The gospel sets some pretty high standards for us because after all, think of where it originates. It originates with the cross. That is the symbol of our faith, but it is also a symbol of hardship and suffering and death. It's a symbol of the most tragic event in history. But yet, this is where our peace begins, at the cross, because it was on that cross that the ultimate struggle between good and evil was fought, between God and Satan, and Jesus triumphed, came out victorious, and opened that door to eternal life for us all. It is that resurrected, living Christ who calls us, offering us rejuvenation for our tired and worn spirits. He doesn't offer us a rocking chair with a nice blanket and a cup of tea with sweet music playing in the background. Just the opposite. Jesus says, follow me. And this is true for everyone who does it. It's no good saying, hey, I've done my share. I've carried my burdens. Time to rest. As long as you have a life, you have an active role to play in fulfilling God's eternal plan. You can't pull the blanket over your shoulders and say, I've done dare care, sit down passively. Jesus calls on us to love our neighbors and those in need. He tells us that you have been commissioned to carry out the mission of mercy in his name. You see, God's farewell gift was definitely not intended to promote a life of relaxation or ease or peace as the world offers it. This peace that Jesus offers is a lifelong process. But we're not alone in all this. Jesus comes with us in the journey. In this conflict, Jesus promises the advocate, the Holy Spirit will be there with us all the way. Jesus speaks of sin and then offers forgiveness. Jesus speaks of love and then gives us a ministry of reconciliation. Jesus speaks of weakness and then calls us to share the burdens of those around us bringing his power to our inadequacies. <coughs> he recruits us to do battle against the evils of this world, but he promises the strength and the peace which is beyond our understanding to accomplish this. It is an active service. Where we put our faith on the line, we discover that all the things were held by God and always God holds us up. Underneath his everlasting arms, as it's put in Deuteronomy 33, 27. Now, I read a while ago that in certain maternity wards, 
when the babies start all crying at the same time, there's a recording that they play and it silences, the, quiets the babies really quick. What is that music that they play? It's a recording of a mother's heartbeat as heard in the womb. The infants may start crying because of the new scary environments that they're in, but they're given a sense of security that's invoked by the sound of a mother's heartbeat. That's the way it is with us Christians. Even though we're challenged day after day, we need to stop our frantic activity and take time to embrace the Holy Spirit. Through faith, we feel the heartbeat of God's love for us all. And we can rest secure knowing that all things belong to God. Then a wonderful thing happens. As we surrender our burdens to God, it is replaced by the gift with ancient origins. It has the power to continually regenerate us. It is that peace that we have deep in our souls. And even more, it's a gift that keeps on giving. It's a gift of peace, a peace that the world cannot understand. But Jesus said, neither could the world take it away and try as it did. So the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of God's total love. Amen. Let us continue in prayer. Sending your peace, O Lord, which is perfect and everlasting, that our souls may radiate peace itself. Send your peace, O Lord, that we may think and act and speak harmoniously. Send your peace, O Lord, that we may be contented and thankful for your bountiful gifts that you send us. Send us your peace, O Lord, that amidst the worldly strife we may enjoy your bliss. Send us your peace, O Lord, that we may endure all, tolerate all in thought and enjoy the grace and mercy that you offer us. Send us your peace, O Lord, that our lives may become a divine vision in the true light and that all darkness may be dispersed. Send us your peace, O Lord, our father and our mother, that we, your children, may unite together as one great family. Today in our prayers, we especially hold all who have passed away as a result of this pandemic in Canada and in the world. We pray for the people of the United States as they deal with this. May they come to grips there and be able to get an upper hand on this. And we pray for all of us that as we go out, we go out safely. Protect us all. And we now pray for those that we name in the silence of our hearts right now and those whose names are known to you alone, O Lord. Lord, in your great mercy, hear our prayer. And now let us join together in saying the prayer that Jesus himself taught us, as we all say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, that peace that passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge of God's total and inclusive love shown to us when God sent his son, Jesus, to be one of us and to share his peace with us all. And after 2,000 years, that same Jesus is still saving and redeeming broken hearts and lives to this very day. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all and remain with you always. Amen.